You've selected your characters. We're ready to begin the game. In this Talisman Tactics vlog, I wanted to share with you beginning tactics. Um, we break the game up as we make our run for the Crown of Command. Beginning game, mid-game, end game, and then the run for the Crown of Command. And ideally, um, within the segments of the overall game, you're trying to hit certain benchmarks. You're trying to position yourself as best as possible, controlling the random as it faces you, but unleashing the random on other players. You're trying to position yourself so as you move through the game, you are in the best place for the smoothest run for the Crown of Command. Now, it doesn't always work out that way because Talisman being random and our best attempts to control it, there are times where you'll be progressing along very well and just from the luck of the cards, the randomness of the adventure cards, another player now starts to pull ahead. And you say, well, I'm not really ready to make the jump from beginning game to mid game, but Fritz is already mid game. I have to jump into those tactics because I have to try and keep up. So it, it does happen. But in the beginning of the game, I am trying to do three things. And, and this changes, of course, a little bit based on the type of characters in play and, and who you draw as a character. There might be some limitations. But the first thing I'm looking to do is purchase some armor. A shield, uh, the breastplate, the helmet, some type of backup plan, some sort of way to control the random if I get defeated in physical strength-based combat. I want to get some gold and I want to purchase that. I'm either going into the city or the blacksmith or if there's a market. Wherever that appears, that's the first thing that I'm, I'm looking to do. Because if I'm a craft-based player, right, the attacks and talisman that you encounter, not from other players, but from um, monsters and encounters, they're either strength or craft. If I'm a strength-based strength -based character, I still could lose that combat. If I'm a craft-based character and I don't have spells to protect me, I will lose that combat. So 50% of the time, I could win or lose that combat. I want to have some sort of roll, a 4, 5, or 6, 5, or 6, or 6 to negate that. I want to get some armor. That's the first thing. The second thing is to try and draw as many cards as I can, as quickly as I can. At the start of the game, um, I've got my maximum life. Now, different characters have different life, yes. And I also have less to lose. I haven't amassed a bunch of followers, items, potions, trinkets, pets, all that type of stuff, where um, if I get killed or an event happens where I lose something, I'm at a disadvantage because now we're mid-game or moving into end-game, and, and I don't have time to waste on that. In the beginning, you are the weakest, but you can also gain the most with the cards that you draw. So what I'm looking to do, based on the expansion, based on where we are, can I go and draw two cards? If you think about this, I want to get the maximum efficiency of every turn. This is why losing a turn in Talisman is big. Generally speaking, um, I roll the D6. I move to an area where I draw a card from the, from the adventure deck, the event deck, or I encounter a space where I roll a D6 to see what happens, um, like the graveyard or the chapel or the tavern. Generally speaking, I draw one card a turn. If I can land on a space that draws two cards a turn, that's like getting two turns in. So I want to hang out, if we're talking base game, by the ruins. I want to hang out by the ruins because this way I get to possibly draw two cards. Yes, I could draw two strength monsters and they gang up on each other. Yes, I could draw an event that essentially nukes that space because I don't want to land there and, and have something happen like get totified or, or get teleported around. But there's also the chance I could draw the rune sword. I could draw something else. I could draw some followers. That's where I want to go. And if I lose some life, if I lose some life, I have some time to regain that life. Or if I lose some life, I have a chance to continue on as opposed to I took two hits because I drew a lot of cards and I'm, I'm stacked to the deck with, with followers and equipment and I've got like two war horses and I've got two mules and carts. Well, you only need one war horse, but two carts pulling all my stuff. Like I'm an, I'm an entire army. If I lose those lives, I'm gone. I'm done. So you have the most life in the beginning. The next part is, um, depending on fate, how much fate you have, I want to be looking um, to either do the en Enchantress or the Mystic 
for strength or craft. Wherever I'm stronger at, that's where I want to try and go. I could be totified. Absolutely. Even with the reroll. But if I'm totified, okay, I, I didn't really have much to lose in the beginning there. Um, if I get my alignment changed, okay, I could maybe change it back at some point. But it's not like um, I'm a good ca- good aligned character, right, because this is the beginning of the game. I'm a good aligned character with um, Holy Lance and the Grail and this artifact and that artifact. I'm stacked to the deck all good. And I do the Mystic, I get turned to evil, and now I lose all my gear, right? At the beginning, you don't have much. But by bouncing around those two, in addition to drawing adventure cards and utilizing fate for the re-roll, if I get totified, anything else, I don't re-roll because I want to save my fate. That's a chance to bypass one strength or one craft immediately. There are the other, those are on the, the um, top edges of the board, top and bottom. On the left and right of the board, there's also of uh, the two spots where a guide can lead you out. You could get attacked or you miss a turn. I believe it's um, the woods on both sides. One strength-based, one craft-based. Those are other great places to kind of hang out if I happen to be able to do that, happen to use fate to get that reroll. The danger there is I could lose a turn. So if I happen to land there, okay, we'll go for it. Um, I'll try to stay on the side if I'm a character that needs craft. I'll stay on the craft side of the table. If I need strength, I'll stay on the strength side of the table. But I don't, I don't like missing that turn. I'd rather take my chances um, in the other places to see where we could level up and how we could do it. Those are the tactica for the beginning of the game, the solid tactica. The other tactic that's going on is I'm looking for opportunity. I can't say what that's going to be, but as the main board populates with events and cards and the magic stream and the pile of gold and visit the trainer centaur dude and all this other type of stuff, as that fills up, I am. I am going to look to take advantage of it and see how that works. But this is the start of the game, Tactica, that we're looking at and that we're exploring as we make our way to the crown of command.